Hi guys, it's Angela and welcome back to my channel, Literature Science Alliance. Today I want to tell you my top 10 fantasy books, specifically adult fantasy books. Um, something important, I just, I could have made this whole list Brandon Sanderson pretty easily. Um, if you can't tell, this is my top shelf and that's all one author. <laughs> but I chose to try and only pick one book from a series if I really like the series and tried to only use one work per author. Keyword being tried, but that was my goal. And it goes without saying, I recommend all of these books and I'll try to do brief descriptions with them so you can decide if there's something for you or not, okay? So without further ado, let's get into my 10th book and that is The Library at Mount Char. And unfortunately, I will put a graphic here because I do not own this book, which sucks. I really want to own all my favorites because if they're my favorite, it, I want to reread them. I want to re-explore that world, especially with this one, because this book is about a woman who had, who was orphaned very young. Her and a bunch of children were orphans and they were taken in by this man who then proceeded to train them each on a specific book. And these books would be like medicine and history, the dead, languages. Our main characters specifically learned languages. And they all had very harsh upbringings by this man for whatever reason. And so you have this dark, twisted upbringing in this woman who then decides to take what she wants and you just follow that that's the general startup and it's really interesting I wasn't expecting it and I still think about it and it's been over a year since I've read it and I kind of want to talk about it more because I don't think anyone talks about it and it's a great standalone fantasy and sometimes you just want to stand alone because you don't want to read 10 books in a series just to get the plot you know so that's my first one the Library at Mount Char, if you are okay with darker themes and some gore and morally gray characters, I think this is great. It's a very entertaining read. My number nine is the fourth book in a series, and that is Blood Mere by Brent Weeks. This is the fourth book in the Lightbringer series and my personal favorite in that series. Um, Next to the first one, I, I like The Black Prism as well, which is the first book. And this is a series that follows characters on a world where the magic system involves drafting color of light. So you can either draft blue or green, red, ultraviolet rays, and all of these colors have different properties. And there's also this whole dynamic of the magic coming at a cost. You can't do this unlimitedly unless you are the prism, which one of our characters is. We follow a, a lot of characters, but initially three, Gavin, Karis, and Kip. Gavin is the prism, so he is the emperor of this world, and he also can draft as much as he wants, and he can do all the colors. Karis is his former fiance and now um, bodyguard. She's a part of the black guard, which um, protects prisms, and Kip is Gavin's bastard and he's in a remote village and he has just recently discovered and is just found out he's a drafter himself. And that's where you start, way back in the Black Prism. And then chaos ensues and I really like this book. When I first picked up this series, I read the first two and I was like, ooh, I need to wait till all of them are out because he takes you on a roller coaster, and the roller coaster is wild. And if you care about your character's well being, <laughs> it's a very stressful ride. So for me, I I liked this one the most. It had the best pacing for me. This this author is really well known for twists, and this had the most. I mean, I didn't even know I could be twisted anymore, <laughs> and there was a twist here. So. This is great, and I can heartily recommend the entire series because it has an ending, and I believe not everyone loves the ending, but it is a satisfying conclusion to this story. And you know, not every modern fantasy has one of those yet, and this one does. So, my number nine. 
and my number eight I also don't own because I've gotten into this habit of when I like something I give it to my mom <laughs> and she's in Cleveland and I'm here in Boston so it doesn't really help me but this is The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden and this is the third book and I it might be called The Witch's Trilogy I don't know but the first book is called The Bear and the Nightingale which is obviously where you should start and this whole trilogy follows the journey of a young girl to being a woman. Her name's, I'm calling call her Vasya, but there's longer and shorter versions of the name. And it's, she is kind of this bridge between um, older religion and newer religion and has this ability of con communing with spirits, which is really important to um, the plot of these stories. And she also is a very independent woman in a world, in a time period where that is not encouraged. So you also have that dynamic and her trying to go on adventures when everyone's just like, get married, stay home. And I don't know, this, this, this one's my favorite because I almost cried on my commute reading this book and it takes a lot to make me cry, but yeah, it was such a gut punch. And it was like one of the early chapters. Like I wasn't prepared. I was just like, oh yay, I got this from the library. Time to get started reading. And I was like, wait, what? And it it wasn't like retconned or anything. Like it was I love when books have stakes and when they make me feel things, but sometimes it really hurts. <laughs> but that's why I love The Winter Witch. I feel like I feel like it does a really good job telling her story and giving it really motion and depth. And I think she's a really interesting character to follow. I think a lot of people try to write Vasya, but they don't write her well, if that makes sense. So I really like that trilogy and I recommend it to a lot of my friends and not everyone, but they really enjoy it usually. And so that is my number eight. And my number seven, my number seven is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> this one I kind of find is now controversial. A lot of people, I think, really don't like the male lead in this book. I didn't mind. But this was a book that I saw at my bookstore, gosh, maybe four years ago. I don't know. When did this book come out? But... <laughs> I saw it, was instantly intrigued by the cover, read the inside slip, and was in instantly captivated by that. And I just like, all right, I want this for Christmas. So I put it on my list. And sometimes on Christmas Eve, we're allowed to open one present. This was mine. And I read half of it in that night, which doesn't normally happen. And this is like over 400 pages. So I, whatever... I, this story did it for me. I was captivated. I was on the ride. I wanted to know what would happen next. It, this story is about a girl who grew up in a village next to a very mean forest. And I say mean forest because this forest is a character. And in order to be protected from the forest, every so often villages have to sacrifice one of their women to their sorcerer who's called the dragon and we start off in that ceremony about like uh, one of the women is going to be chosen by the dragon to go away and everyone expected her friend to be chosen but Agnieszka that's our main character was chosen instead and on top of that she kind of has this connection to older magic that no one else has had for a really long time like it's like she's kind of a reincarnation of an older witch and that's where we start, and I don't know, I really like it. I reread it occasionally. It looks really nice on my shelf. I get good feelings, you know, whenever they talk about, does it give you joy? This gives me joy. So that is, for me, my number seven. Now, my next two picks are kind of like my, I do still love them, but they're kind of nostalgia picks. And so my first one is my Harry Potter pick. So if I had to pick one book from Harry Potter, it would be Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This one is my favorite. I 
can't tell you the number of times I've read it, but I can show you. There's a, it's a well-loved copy, and I try really hard to take care of my books, but still got that little tear there. And this is, you know, when he is getting ready for the Tri Wizard tournament, and he is somehow inexplicably in there, even though there should only be three candidates, and he's too young. And although I am so sad that there's so little Quidditch, <laughs> I really like all the montages and him and Hermione working together to get these tasks done. I I, I, there, I need to reread it because there's so much in here that's not in the movies and most of my memories are probably linked to those because it's easier to watch a two hour movie than it is to reread the entire series. So it's on my list. But yeah, this is, if I had to pick one, this one is currently my favorite. If I did a reread, I'd be curious if that changed. But yeah, for me, I love this one. It's so good. And now, my number five is my other, I hesitate to say nostalgia pick, because I reread this three years ago, and I still really like it. And that is The Amber Spyglass. Oh, this is very shiny. Okay, this is kind of good for you, but it's on a weird angle. And so this is, you know, Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials. This is the third one, and it's my favorite. I... I think I literally go like my least favorite's Golden Compass and my most favorite's Amber Spyglass, and it's that kind of trajectory. And I think the first book's really fun adventure, but the other two, the world building, the mystery, the drama, I'm just, the stakes. My mom won't reread this series because she hates what happens in this book. I reread this series because if they didn't end it that way, I would hate this series. But they ended it in such a satisfying way to me. Like, and that's all I can say. I can't, I don't want to spoil anything. I can't tell you why I love this book, but I, this is my favorite in His Dark Materials. And I love this series so much that I'm so scared to read the other new books. Because <laughs> I, I don't know, it's so complete. And I worry when authors return to old worlds without a plan, if they didn't have that like laid out. And so I'm kind of waiting to see those all released and get the general consensus because... I didn't need more. I'm not asking for it. I, I'm, I'm perfectly content to read this and the other two. Reread them every five years forever. <laughs> totally fine with it. But yeah, the Amber Spyglass with my really old hole in the middle cover. <laughs> so that is my number five. Number four, I also don't own because I gave it to my mom. <laughs> and that is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. And this one, whew, this is not a hot take, I feel like. I feel like everyone who stumbled upon this series in the last few years is like, whoa. But, whoa. <laughs> this takes place on a world that is perpetually in a state of apocalypse, essentially. And these, these states of apocalypse are what are referred to as fifth seasons. To the point... This happens so often that they have what is called stone lore to handle it, and they are very strict rules on how to keep human civilization afloat until shit calms down. <laughs> and whew, it's a unique culture, a unique magic system, unique writing style. Like, everything about this book, if you are tired of normal fantasy or typical modern fantasy or class this book is so different now it is character and world building driven those are its main driving points like the plot is there but it's not like it's not it's not fast paced it's not going very far and if i found that my mom and i devoured these and my stepdad who probably reads almost 200 books a year couldn't get into it so I do think the type of reader you are matters, but for me, like, I am so excited to reread these one day because I missed probably so much. <laughs> and, like, like, and it's, I, I barely scratched the surface, I feel like, even though I've read the whole time through, it's like, I feel like I just got, like, the plot. <laughs> and I want to get more. I want to really see the world. And I, this world is so different, and she has such a unique voice, and I really love it. So yeah, the fifth season, and I chose that one because honestly I could have chosen any of them. I feel like for me, they're all the same, but I think the first book does something satisfying that the other ones don't, So, but they're all tied for me. 
All right, the rest of them I do own, and these are the top three. Let me grab the pile. Now, I was shocked while I was making this list that this one made it to number three because I just read this one for the first time two months ago. So it might not stay here forever, but that is The Last Witch. And this is the first Witcher short story collection. And I liked it so much I asked for this edition. Not that it's very expensive, but I already owned the mass paperback, which I don't love its art. And I'm mad at that art because that art is why I haven't read this book and I love it. And I love it because of Geralt. I love Geralt. I normally don't love characters. Like I think making my favorite characters list will be very hard, but Geralt, like I have a crush on him. I think he's really cool. I like his occupation. I His horse is pretty great. Um, he has weird friends. Like, this is just short stories. And you just get to follow Geralt on jobs. And A, that is such a unique storytelling narrative style, which I think is part of why I couldn't put this book down because it was just so like, this is weird. I don't have like a plot. I have, I'm like reading a TV show. And, but also like, I just want to give him a hug. Like he's so, he has no friends. Really. I mean, he has friends, but like everyone hates him and thinks he can't feel. And I'm just like, oh, that's nice of you all. But I, I read this because the show was coming out because I saw the trailer and I was like, ooh, that looks cool. That looks like, you know, modern, like, Xeno Warrior Princess or something. That looks like something I could do. Because if you can't tell, I'm, I, I, I aspire to be, be as nerdy as possible. And it really, I, I thought I'd like this. I didn't know I'd love this. And I really I like the show. And this is a fantasy series that's been out, I mean, not in English, but it's been written since the 90s. And I didn't know it existed. I mean, I've heard of the games, but I just... I was dumb and I didn't Google and I just thought they were games. So yeah, for me, big surprise. I mean, definitely not for everyone, but for me, it just, I really liked it. Now, my next one, my next two are Brandon Sanderson because he's my favorite author. And that's not a hot take, but that's just is how it is. I'm not going to change who I am. But my hot take is that my favorite standalone Sanderson book is Elantris. And this is my really pretty leather bound edition. I'll show you some of the art inside. But yeah, this, where to begin with you? This is such a good book and it's such an underrated book. For so many reasons. Like, is it technically the best thing? No. But is anything on my list technically the best thing? No. <laughs> this book I read in 2007. So at the time, there were only three Sanderson books. There was this, Mistborn, and Well of Ascension. And this one I found in the backseat of my to-be future stepdad. He was just starting to date my mom at the time. And I read the prologue and was like, hey, I'm gonna read this. And he's like, okay so because what's he gonna do not let the daughter of his you know per of his girlfriend read his book like that doesn't seem like a good move <laughs> and so i read it and i love it i you, you've got you got this city that used to be a magical paradise full of research and medicine and knowledge could be and everyone who was sent there was blessed that was the idea you woke up one day blessed and then you got to live in elantris and then one day the premises it all changed in the shroud it was what i don't know if it was called the shroud before but it kind of became that and then you are splotchy and kind of perpetually decaying but you cannot die and you're still thrown in elantris and so you're instantly like well what happened at least i was and that's the premise. And you have these three characters. You've got Rodan, who's the prince, who gets taken by the Shroud. But everyone thinks he's dead because it's better to be dead by, than taken by the Shroud. And you have his betrothed, who shows up the day after he's taken. But she's legally bound to him. 
And so she has to live in this foreign land where she has no friends and like make her way. And oh, I love Serene. She is, I think, let's see. Here's here's a picture of her in case you cared. But she's awesome. Look at her first sword. She, I really love Serene. <laughs> Serene is a really great character. I mean, if you ever feel like you don't fit in, Serene's got you because <laughs> she doesn't feel like she fits in. But she doesn't, she's not self-pitying. She doesn't have a chip on her shoulder. She's just like, this is my life. And here's how I'm making the best of my situation. And that's the story of Rodan, too. It's like, well, here I am in Elantris. Might as well do the best I can. Because, you know? And then the third character is a priest who travels from, I think, to W country. Can't quite remember. But this, this country wants to take over this land. And so his idea is, I must convert everyone to our religion. Because if I don't, they will all die. But if they're converted, they will come into the fold. So he's the villain, but his motivations are so pure. And you follow these three characters, and you're following the mystery of Atlantis. And I love it. I have reread this book so many times when I'm depressed. And it picks me up. Anytime I'm in a reading slump, I'll pick this up. And I'm like, yes, reading. Because that's what this book also did for me. I picked it up as a freshman in high school. Back when I'm being forced to read classical literature, I wasn't old enough to appreciate yet. And this book reminded me that I can read an adult book and still have a good time. And so for all those reasons and more, that's why I love this book. And my favorite fantasy is Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. This epic tome of a book that's falling apart. <laughs> And this is the second book in Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archives. And that is his, that's his big one. I, I would hold this more, but it is very heavy. And the Stormlight Archive, oh, what's that about? Um, it's an epic fantasy. I mean, that is the series you get into if you just are like, want to be thrown into a world with new characters and just see what happens. Like, there is definitely a plot and it's, but you really just, I think they talk about all their character kind of like descriptions on the back of Way of Kings, but I swear the Way of Kings description is not very intriguing to me personally, but at least this is Shallon. She pretends to be a scholar to steal something from a rich lady. That's her thing. She's the, the scout, the thief or the make-believer on the back of the book. You have Kaladin who used to be a fighter, but is now a slave. And you have Dalinar, who used to be this fierce warrior and is now plagued with dreams and questioning himself. And you have, those are your characters. You're on Roshar. Has a really cool magic system. Like, whew. Ah, oh, I love it. And we're still learning about it, which is my favorite thing. Ah, we're three books in and I still barely know it. But I do know it's based on physics, which was my bachelor's degree in I really love how, like, he doesn't, he says this in interviews, he doesn't go into, like, detail, but he, like, makes sure he knows, like, enough, and he captured quantum mechanics in a really fun way, and uh, I, I'll probably talk about that more in other videos, because I, I kind of do want to compare, like, his magic systems to, like, what happens in the real world, but the payoff in this book this book's payoff, it, it's, it's rises and falls, it is the most satisfying thing for me like I have I haven't read one something like that so that's why it's my number one so if you want something epic if you want to get lost like this isn't this is obviously not if you just want to read one book on the weekend like this is you want to spend a few weeks really like being lost in the world that, that's why I love this one so yeah those are my top 10 books thanks for listening if you Hearing these books have recommendations for me. Let me know if you want to hear more about certain books in these series I've briefly mentioned. Also, let me know. Um, and I want to know some of your favorites, even if they overlap with mine, especially if they overlap with mine. Validate me, <laughs> please.
<laughs> but yeah. So that's my top 10 fantasy books. Have a great day.